Hey everyone, CPO here, and today is bike check day. This is my 2019 Canyon Strive. This is the CF 8.0 model. I'm gonna basically go over the bike, show you the build specs, and any of the little things I've done to it, which is not really much, added some stuff. Um, but honestly, the reason I bought this bike is because the build was pretty much exactly what I was looking for. So uh, in this video, I'm gonna go through this build with you, show you some nice close-up detail shots of everything, show you what I'm doing for tool storage and uh, any other little odds and ends I have going on on the bike. And uh, yeah, bike check day, Canyon Strive, let's do it. All right, so first of all, I think this bike is just beautiful. I love the combination of the matte black with the gloss black and that whole blacked out stealth look. Uh, and for what it's worth, uh, if it wasn't clear, this is the stealth version. So I talked a little bit about the specs of this bike in a previous video. I'll throw a link up here uh, from a trail ride that I did, but uh, here's a little bit more detail. It's got a Fox transfer dropper on it. It's got uh, SRAM code brakes, G5 grips. It's got the G5 stem and G5 handlebars. Actually really cool stuff. I like the Canyon G5 stuff. I've never experienced it before until now. And then of course the shape shifter is really what makes this bike different than any other bike that's on the market. It's got the click and the clack setting. Uh, I'll go into a little bit more on that in a second. Of course, here's the dropper post uh, lever there. All right, the shock is a Fox Float DPX2 Performance Elite. The fork is a Fox 36 Performance Elite. This is the Fit 4, 160 millimeters of travel. The seat is a SDG Radar. Drivetrain is a SRAM X01 Eagle. Uh, it's got the 10 to 50 Eagle 12 speed cassette. It's got the E13 dash guard and chain guide combo. The crank arms are 165 millimeter. Wheels are Reynolds TR309s, DHR2, 2.4 inches front and rear. These are both tubeless ready, comes with stems. So this is the um, Specialized Z bottle cage. It's a right-hand side um, cage. That way I can, uh, I use my right hand to grab my water. Uh, it does fit a full-size water bottle in there. So I have the EMT multi-tool down below, also from Specialized, and uh, out pops. Uh, it's got the usual uh, players, uh, pretty much everything you need for the bike, and it clips right in there, easy access. Uh, most of my stuff is right here in this Dakin uh, bag here. This is the hot laps frame bag, I don't remember. Um, it has pretty much almost everything I need. So I'll pull this bad boy off here. I have a spare tube. I have two CO2 canisters. I do have the um, CO2, um, what do you call this, nozzle. Um, I have a pair kit here. So I'll, uh, I'll put links to all this stuff uh, down below, but inside here are the bacon strips and the, uh, the repair kit and a couple of cores. Um, then I have obviously a uh, uh, tire spoon here and that's what's in there. And I like that this package sort of locks together uh, right inside the frame, keeps it out of the way, even with shock travel. Um, there's enough clearance to have that there. And you can see here, um, I've got uh, some frame tape there to protect that. Um, here's a, a, a strip of tape to uh, protect from the strap. And then I've got these little pieces here to raise everything up off so it's well protected. I have the same uh, frame protector. This is all mountain style um, down on the bottom of the bike. It does come with a nice uh, bash guard down at the at the bottom bracket area, but this is to protect um, up at the top. So that is on the bottom. So this is uh, for my Garmin Edge 530. It's what I use for navigation and logging. Underneath here though, I have a specialized uh, top cap chain breaker tool. So um, I can just pull out my multi-tool loosen this up and inside here is a chain breaker. Uh, so that's got my chain breaker. The Eagle links, the 12 speed links don't fit in this. My links are actually here. 
uh, taped to my brake cable. Uh, so I've got my uh, power link there uh, in case of emergency and the ability to break a chain right in this top cap and it lays underneath my Garmin. Oh, and one more secret I learned from watching uh, EWS racers, I have some zip ties uh, shoved in here. So uh, I can pull those out if I need to zip tie anything up. By the way, one thing, uh, I mentioned this before, that I really like about the DPX2 on this bike is that the lockout is on the non-drive side. The lockout on the RockShox rear shock and the other builds uh, being on the drive side, and it is, it's on the other side, but on the Fox, it's on the non-drive side. So um, I really like that. So I really should spend a little bit of time to talk about the shape shifter, um, how it worked in clack mode. So let me show you what that means. All right, so quite simply, what the shape shifter click and clack does is it manipulates this. There's actually a Fox shock under here, um, underneath this cap. And what it does is it simply uh, extends and compresses to change not only much travel you get out of the rear shock, but also it changes the geometry. It literally um, stiffens it up. So I'm in the uh, the clack mode, which is their downhill mode per se. And this is 160 millimeters of travel up front and 150 in the rear. So lots of awesome travel for downhill. But if I want to turn this into more of an XC, uh, or a, a trail bike, then what I do is I just click this shape shifter and watch the bike, the magic. So the geometry changed, the seat tube and the head tube steepened by a degree and a half, and the travel here on this rear shock is now limited to 135 uh, millimeters. So 160 now and 135 in the back, which is a really nice trail bike, uh, that can still handle uh, a lot of fun stuff. The interesting thing about this is, this is just a standard shock. So um, other bike manufacturers choose to adjust travel by locking out. Notice I haven't changed the lockout on the shock. It's still open, uh, or there's a trail mode or the locked mode. That's independent of what's happening. They really adjust the travel through these geometry changes. So then I can go back into enduro mode and then it'll automatically take a hit and then readjust itself when it compresses. And then I can go back and forth as needed real time on the fly on the trail. So uh, it really is kind of cool and you can see it sort of go back into XC mode um, where it sort of comes, comes you know, back. But anyway, that's uh, Shapeshifter, super cool. Uh, I pretty much leave it there in the uh, XC mode most of the time where I ride. 135 millimeters of travel is nice, plus the uh, steeper geometry keeps the bottom bracket raised and um, just makes for a better all round climber. Uh, so yeah, I have very little uh, pedal bob, if any, that I can detect. Uh, while riding in this configuration. And at a moment's notice, all I have to do is hit that button. Next time the travel compresses, uh, it just goes right back into the downhill mode. So, kind of cool.